Hey guys, it's Red Raven again. Um, I haven't recorded a video for you guys in a little while, so I thought I would. Um, today, I'm going to be diving into Patcher. Um, not super in-depth, but it's going to be pretty sweet nonetheless. Um, as I've mentioned in a previous video, uh, either the last one or the one before that, um, I said that I've been working in Patcher a lot more and that I've been focusing more on sound design rather than writing music lately. Um, and this is kind of one of those things. Um, so a lot of people on my videos where I use 3XOSC as my sound generator, um, and then I manipulate from that, they really are surprised by how much you can get out of 3XOSC, um, which seems to be a fairly common thing. Um, however, there is a large group of people who uh, recognize the power of uh, Patcher and 3XOSC, and even before Patcher came out, um, there were people who were using 3XOSC to write entire songs, uh, percussion included, um, just to show off how powerful it is. Um, now with Patcher around now, it's actually so much easier to do this and you can end up with so much better results. So today, my challenge was to make a, a fat synthesizer sound, something like what you would maybe find on like a Virus TI, using only a single oscillator uh, from 3XOSC. So I'm going to show you what that sounds like. Uh, right now and first let me bring up my 3xosc and I'm going to show you that I only have a single oscillator running you see oscillator one it's a saw wave it does have some of the stereo detune in use however you see oscillator two and three has absolutely no volume so they are not coming out now if you look over here on my mixer you see I have a control surface and a patcher if we open up the control surface it's just an XY pad and I have that controlling the cutoff amount and the cutoff uh, filter frequency uh, via XY. Let me get it so you can see that. Um, you see I move this XY knob and you can see this knob right here um, and this knob right here uh, move, except I just moved that with my mouse. So I'm gonna have to, there we go. So you can see if I move on the X plane, the amount moves a little bit. And if I move on the Y plane, the filter frequency moves. Okay, so that's what this XY pad that I'm going to be messing around with is controlling. Now, if we bring up Patcher, you see um, it's just a flanges, a chorus, two love filters, a wave shaper, and a blood overdrive with some LFO modulation on the flanges and chorus. That's the full effect chain um, that is going to be generating this sound that I'm about to show you. Uh, and then I'll dive in depth on how I made the sound. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, and that's a single oscillator. Remember that. So I'm going to show you how I did that, okay? So if I take the patcher off and I play that. It's clipping, so let me turn my volume. Up. Okay, so there it becomes very obvious that that's a single oscillator. Um, but when I turn the patcher on... You can hear it sounds very huge. It sounds like it's got this massive unison effect on it. So I'm going to show you how I achieved that. Now, um, this is actually quite simple to do if you have a basic understanding of how things like chorus, flanger, and phaser work. Um, those three effects, with just a basic knowledge of what they actually do, you can make some massive modulations on a sound um, like this. Um, so uh, first I did a flanges. Now this is actually about my fifth um, version of this um, patcher. That's why it looks so clean and, you know, and it functions so well with so little. Um, this is about my fifth attempt. I've spent about two days messing around with this challenge that I gave myself. Um, trying to achieve the best results and so far this is the best chain that I've come up with and this is the first one I felt um, was worthy of recording for YouTube. So I'm going to show you the flanges. Now with Patcher the only thing that it doesn't have yet is the ability to move these generators up and down in this line to make it easier to understand um, if you're moving. Like let's decide I want to move this little love filter before the flange as well. 
it still stays where it's at over here. So it can be quite difficult to remember where everything is. Um, but if you keep everything minimized and then you just double click on it from the map, it'll open up what you double clicked on and it's really easy to know that that's the effect you're working on if everything else you keep closed. So you can see I have an LFO going to the speed of the flanges. Now that is coming from a peak controller right here. So if we bring up that, you see um, the peak controller has no audio coming into it. Remember the yellow lines in Patcher are audio, the red lines are um, parameters being modulated, and blue lines, which are not in this patch, are MIDI data. Um, but this is just purely audio and uh, MIDI or no, audio and uh, effect parameter data. So you see on this, I have the output of the LFO turned on. Now the way you do that is you right click on this, you go outputs, controllers, and then you click LFO. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to activate that by just you know right clicking and hitting activate anywhere in here. I don't believe there is. I think with the peak controller, you, you still have to go through the file structure that way. But once you have that LFO activated, you can come over here and you can right click on the speed. You see I've already done it. You click activate and then you just connect the two up and you set up your LFO base, volume, and speed like I've done. Okay, so um, basically all the flanger is doing is um, spreading other copies of the sound um, out around the original pitch. Um, and it's manipulating both the pitch and the phase, I believe, okay? Um, and the speed is the LFO of that detune, and since I'm constantly modulating a modulator, that's why it gives it such a huge difference to the sound. You can see I have the spread, the frequency spread, turned all the way up, the depth up a good amount, and a, a fairly decent amount of delay to the effect, so that you get the original sound, and then a bit of a a few milliseconds later, you get the affected sound, which gives it this huge quality of sound, right? So basically, the chorus is doing a, exactly the same thing, um, just it's a slightly version of the same effect. Um, you see here, I'm modulating the depth with an LFO, and you see it's a faster LFO than my speed um, knob going up and down there on the flanges, okay? Um, and you see I have a fairly low LFO for LFO 1, LFO 2 is in the middle, and LFO 3 is pretty high. You see I have my cross cut off down at around 40 hertz, uh, and then everything else has been left alone except the delay, which again is a, a fairly significant delay. It's just under 10 milliseconds, which is just under what the human ear can detect as being a delay, so it's just in that range where it sounds like it could be um, like an echo, but it's not quite an echo um, just yet to the human perception at least. Um, so then both of those are going into a love filter, which is just adding more movement to the sound. Um, it's just three filters running. I have a band pass on one, a high pass on filter two, and a low pass on three. And then I have those cutoffs being modulated via LFOs within love filter here. And their rates are fairly long and slow. It's kind of like more like a pad type of love filter um, preset, but it really adds some nice subtle movement. So those are both the same love filter, and all I did was I tweaked the, the cutoffs and the LFO speeds to make the flanges and chorus sound slightly different. So if what I do is I mute out these other effects, and I'll bypass the distortions for now. So what you're getting ready to hear is just the uh, original sound going into the flanges and love filter and then going from there to FL Studio, okay? So you can hear the sound. So if I disconnect it from the love filter, or here, I'll just mute it for now. If I go straight from the flanges out to uh, Fruity Loops here, and listen to that. That's what the flanges is doing to the sound. And then after it goes through the love filter, it sounds like this. So you can hear the filters are subtle, but they add quite a bit of movement to the sound. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the filter and from our flanges. And then I'm going to run from the flanges to the left filter and then out through the distortion and you'll hear the sound. <laughs> So 
you hear the distortion is having a huge impact on the sound. It's what's really just driving it hard and just making it sound absolutely ridiculous. Um, so if we listen to the chorus uh, straight out to FL Studio bypassing its filter, it sounds like this. So very similar to the flanger. Um, however, the detune is a bit more pronounced here. And so if we listen to that after the filter, but not through the distortion yet. You see, I've really added a lot of movement to that one. So if we listen to the flanger and chorus both at the same time, but skipping the distortion, it would sound like this. See, they really complement each other. So if we go ahead and disconnect from all of those, and then we run these both through the distortion chain at the same time. the effect. Now this line right here is coming, is skipping both the flanger, the chorus, and the filters and just going straight to the distortion. So this is the original dry signal just going distorted. And then you add that with the chorus and flanger. So if we look at our distortions, you'll see that on the wave shaper, I've set it to a double curve and I've given it some tension by dragging it up. A little. Uh, the pre I didn't need to push very hard because the sound had a, quite a lot of signal at this point already. It's being pushed very hard even though the pre is only at the middle. Uh, but if you notice there's going to be this little white line that jumps across here and it's just going to stay all the way. And you saw it just drop back to the, the beginning there real quick. Hopefully my screen capture captures that. Um, but it, it's going very hard through the wave shaper. Um, and then there's a blood overdrive which again is running very, very hard. This is where 90% of the distortion is coming from. Um, so you see I'm preamping it at uh, 0.37 and I'm post gaining it at negative 0.64. Um, I have times 100 turned on. Um, now where this knob sits when it's turned on doesn't really matter. If it's over 50% it's on and if you drop it under 50% it's off. That's just it. It's just a switch in knob form. So if it just says on and it's there, it's the same as on and being turned all the way over. Um, I'm not doing any pre-band uh, filtering or post-low-pass uh, filtering, um, but the color is just south of 50% there. It's 0.437, um, which isn't going to make a huge impact on the sound. The color, if you turn it to the right, it'll color the higher frequencies more, and to the left is the low frequency. So I went just around the mid-range because that's what this sound was designed for. Um, and so if we take a listen to it after the wave shaping, but not through the blood overdrive, it sounds like this. So, not terribly distorted. Um, and then we push that signal through the blood overdrive. You see the blood overdrive is having the biggest effect distortion-wise on the sound. If I turn this times 100 off, you hear it's still not very distorted. You turn that times 100 on. And it's that switch right there that's making the difference on this particular patch. Um, so you can see it's fairly simple to do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that line there from the wave shaper. Um, and you see it's not very complicated patch. We're using a total of uh, six actual audio effects uh, and two effects that are uh, just purely for manipulating um, the other effects. So eight total mixer slots, which would usually, if you look at your mixer, um, if we bring up an empty track, you see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these mixer slots, okay? Um, so this would usually take you a full slot, a full track here in your mixer, right? Um, here, we're doing it with one slot, so you still have room for, you know, EQs, um, multiband compression, though with all this distortion, you really don't need to compress it. These distorters are compressing the signal plenty well at this point. Um, so you may only do some compression just to maybe add some attack or something to the sound. 
Um, but really, at that point, it would be best to do it with a an envelope on the volume instead, in my opinion. But that's a, a rant for another time and place. Um, but you see, we've done it with just one slot, and that left me a slot to use control surface to manipulate the 3X OSC itself before being thrown through this chain. So usually, this would take you a few mixer slots um, for this one sound. Whoops. Um, but you see here, I've done it with one mixer slot and two out of eight possible effects thrown into the actual mixer rack, um, which is a huge help uh, for keeping your projects organized. Um, and you can also, if you look, if I right click here within the patcher and go add plugin, you can see I can add another patcher effect version or a patcher generator version within patcher. Um, it does add very, very minimal uh, latency and delay to the signal from my testing. Um, I've asked around on the image line forums and gotten a few answers from some of the developers, but um, not very detailed answers like what I'm hoping for. Um, I'm going to continue to try to get those more detailed answers, and as I learn them, I will share them on my channel here. Um, but um, you see, you can have very organized projects, and you can keep your patcher from having just wires going all over the damn place by using patchers within patchers if you really, really needed to. Um, and it'll keep your effects nice and simple. And you can see um, running them serial versus the flanger into the chorus, into a single filter, running them side by side uh, gives you a huge difference on the sound. So go out there, experiment with patcher, um, enjoy the, the, the fun uh, rack mount modular type uh, system, and uh, go make some crazy sounds, all right? This is Red Raven, peace and out.